at their own 28. Scott Grooms, pass for the only Irish touchdown so far, back in at quarterback. Fumble. Fumble on the snap, and the fullback, Smith, jumps right on it. May have picked up a yard or two as the ball banded forward. That's about the third time today that Grooms has had trouble covering the exchange. That sure is. That's the third one, Jim, and that really hurts your football team. You take three opportunities away to make yardage and make first downs. And one of the things that's happening now, Air Force is bringing three defensive backs over here whenever they go into a slot. slot. Watch for Notre Dame to come back and go away from that slot. Most dangerous receiver, Jackson, still right here. They fake on the play action. Here's Grooms. Grooms now going to have to run. Now he fakes and taken out of bounds. He crossed the 30. He's going to get a short gain out of the play, but nothing long. Air Force had three deep receivers covered. They bet both Jackson and Howard down, along with the tight end, Bavaro. So Notre Dame now faces a third down. Well, they were trying to do what the coaches normally refer to as a flood pattern. Fake the play action. Brought Bavaro all the way across the field. The outside receiver was clean out. If it had been in a zone coverage, would have been good. Air Force was in a man coverage, and everybody was, was going with a man for man. It's third down and uh, seven here for Notre Dame. Just over their 31-yard line. Two wide receivers to left. Groves up, goes over the middle. Incomplete. They tried to hit the tight end, Bavaro, at the 39-yard line. That was the spot they needed to go for the first down. I don't think Bavaro's deep enough. If he caught the ball there, it would not have been a first down. Rotella was covering for the Air Force. But now it's fourth, and Notre Dame will punt. Air Force gets back the football, and Notre Dame can prepare to see that option out of the wishbone. There's Thomas, one of the nation's leading kick returners, and into punt Mike Maricola, averaging over 40 yards a punt. Well, these are two great kicking games dueling here today. Good stuff. Maricola's been rushed a couple of times. Thomas, no signal, takes it on the third. Thomas looking for the sideline, being chased. Great coverage by Notre Dame. Taken out of bounds on the 31. So that was tremendous coverage down here by Notre Dame. And so it'll be Air Force ball at their 31. Francisco was the man down under the punt. We'll take a timeout with a score. Air Force 14, Notre Dame 7. Crown Championship Series continues tomorrow, 6.30 on ESPN, with the top Colts going, including on the road again. Jim, this is a key series for both ball clubs. Defensively, five minutes to go in the first half. Notre Dame should, has to stop uh, Air Force. If they get some more points, they go into halftime with a comfortable lead. On the other hand, Air Force would love to go down right now, put more points on the board, go in at halftime with a very comfortable lead. Well, this could be a key series in this entire ball game. Air Force uh, right now would like to take some time off the clock. Five minutes to go in the half. Air Force leads 14-7. Bart Weiss continues to run. He gives him the counter play up the middle. Spreading through there was Pushestiak. And he got a nice treat. No, it's going to be Simmons. Jody Simmons, number 25. Pat Ballard tripped him up. And so Air Force have been using that triple option play a lot. Now going to a lot of counters. Oh, yeah. Steps to his right. And then he comes back to his left and hands it in there. Now he's doing a lot of audible at the line of scrimmage. Notre Dame. Notre Dame is using... Uh, 50 defense, or they're making about three defensive fronts. He's audible into the front for the play that he wants against that front. Gain of nine, second and just one here for the Air Force at their 41-yard line. Keep there by Weiss. He tries to cut back, and he is covered. And he goes short of the first down. Wally Klein, 6'9", 278, just buried Weiss at the line of scrimmage. And it'll be third down a yard to go. Okay. You can watch him as he gets up there now. His head looks to the right side, looks to the left side, trying to look what defensive adjustments the Notre Dame front men are doing. Then he calls the play. He might add numbers or subtract numbers, whatever their audible system is, to try to put his offense in the best play against that defensive front. Ferris, they got two wide receivers in, trying to spread out that uh, Notre Dame defense a little bit. Third down a yard. Notre Dame looking for the goal for the first down. Here's the keep out of the pitch back to Simmons. He's got the turner torn, and Simmons has got the first down. He turns in to the 45. Mike Golick heading for Notre Dame, but Simmons scores another first down. Air Force keeps the ball with the clock rolling. Well, they had to play. They had to play well defense. Mike Haywood, when he came up, if he had gotten himself under control, they had two people out there, but he allowed himself. He allowed himself to get cut down and let Simmons get to the outside. We may see Simmons some kind of football right in that game against LSU and Vanderbilt. Oh boy, they'll be roaring. Those Tiger fans will. What a spot that'll be and Jim Simpson Paul McGuire will be there for ESPN tonight 7.30 Eastern Standard Time first down of the Air Force keep a wide play action a blitz by Notre Dame fires up field incomplete 
He got rid of the ball, throwing toward Mike Brown, a halfback, but there was a full all-out blitz over Notre Dame. Penalty flag goes down. They may have roughed the passer. Kovaleski came in and nailed Weiss. Well, Weiss looked around and saw nothing but navy blue and golden domes, and he unloaded in the general direction of Mike Brown. Now down comes the referee, Vincent Price. We'll see what this is about, but the flag was thrown. Now, they may throw ground. I don't think they're going to... Well, I think they're going to say it was a mistake. Well, he's going he's gonna to eat the, he's gonna eat the flag. Uh, the referee ran all the way downfield, but checked with one of, the, one of the other officials on what was happening down there. So, uh, apparently, he may have Might felt have like thought it, intentional in, grounding no, for this. He may have th thought that it was a... Uh, he may have called out, he may have thought it was an uncatchable pass. Whatever it is, it's second down and ten. Carpenter's back in, it's split in for the Air Force. Second and 10 at their 45. And Weiss has to keep it this time and duck up the middle. A little bit of a mishap there. Robert Banks for Notre Dame came in to hit Weiss, number four. It's just a short gain, and here'll be a key third down for Air Force with over three minutes on the clock. Well, evidently the ball might be getting a little bit slippery and wet out there. The people on the sideline should really keep dry towels and keep drying that bow off. We've had four center quarterback chain fumbles in this game so far, and it really isn't raining that hard. It's misting out there, but not a hard rain. You know, they thought last year when uh, Air Force lost its quarterback, they'd be in trouble, but Bart Weiss and Brian Knorr both have done a great job for the Falcons. Weiss now has broken the bone. Uh, he has set uh, one of his halfbacks, Brown, off in a slot, and Air Force is going to call timeout. What happened there, Ed? Well, I think they were a little slow getting the play in from the sideline. They took a little extra time in the huddle. When they came up the line of scrimmage, didn't have enough time to beat the 25-second okay. count. We'll be right back. Air Force leads 14-7. Remaining in the first half, two minutes and 39 seconds. Air Force ball. Falcons are leading Notre Dame 14-7, and they have the ball with a big third and nine here at their own 46. In motion, they're setting up the reverse play. And here comes Ferris with some running room. He's got a lot of room over the 50. He's got the first down over the 40. 35 to the 32. And the Air Force surprises Notre Dame with a trick play, a wide receiver reverse, and it clicks down to the 32-yard line. Well, here you see it. Now, the man responsible for the reverse coming back here was the defensive end. He got himself caught too far inside. Once he gets outside, now the people downfield are in man-for-man -man coverage. They're going off with him. Hey, that was a, and that was an option pass play. This guy's a former quarterback, Ferris, and he was set to throw if they came up to pressure. And a double-covered receiver downfield with the one defensive action to come off. And here it is from another angle. He's looking, kind of not really thinking too much about making the pass. They had too much room. First down with the Air Force. A keep by Weiss. Weiss pitches it back. And now here's uh, Simmons trying to get outside. And a great defensive play by Notre Dame. Spells him up. That was Troy Wilson, a left corner linebacker. And Notre Dame stops the uh, option play for one of the rare times here this afternoon. Well, they stopped them that play then, but the prior play that made that big first down on, on that third down situation is now going to enable Air Force to almost run this clock out or at least get an attempt at a field goal before they have. Notre Dame has only one timeout left. Uh, they, they really won't have the ability to stop the clock. 1.39 to go. Field goal range for... Uh, Mateos, 54 yards he's made one, up the middle, penalty flag thrown, fullback Pat Evans, a little bit of a counter there out of the fullback spot, Kovaleski tripped him up, the flag goes down. Ed, one of the pleasant things about this game is we've had very few penalties. Yeah, this was a key win uh, from, from Air Force's standpoint, though. They were a little bit of motion, went on a quick count, somebody wasn't quite set. They're going to take the five-yard penalty course and make it second down, but more importantly, they kind of take them out of that field goal range unless they make another big play or two. Well, they had carried down inside the 30 and definitely would have been in range for Mateos, but now it's back to the 39, and it becomes second down and very long yardage, second and 17. Comes down to that, Mateos has got a good leg. He's only missed a 147 yarder this year. He's already made a 54 yard kick this year, so he's got uh, that long range. That was against Utah. There you see him, another minute and a half to go. Carpenter is the wide receiver. That's a familiar name. You fans back in the 40s remember the lonely end, Bill Carpenter, who's now Brigadier General and in the College Football Hall of Fame. Well, this is his son playing wide receiver today for the Air Force. 
Second and long for the Air Force. Keep our wife to go to the short side. They pitch it out to Brown. Not much running room over there. Kovaleski need more room than that to run that pitch option play. They went into the boundary. Well, they've been running to the wide side. This time they thought maybe Notre Dame would be overshipped. They came back into signing, but it also stopped the clock, which they really didn't particularly want to do at this stage. Get back to the penalties. The Air Force had two, and Notre Dame's had one, so there hasn't been many penalties. Only three for the half. We just had one. There's Mike Brown, who's been the leading receiver for the Falcons. Also one of the leading rushers, but he's been out for two games with an injury. Simmons, Evans, and Brown are the running backs. And Weiss, the quarterback, as Air Force faces a big third down play. They need to pick up here at least four or five yards to give Mateos a good side of the field goal. And they give the fullback, and he's got some room. That is Pat Evans on a slant inside the 30-yard line. Doesn't get the first down, but he's going to give Mateos a better shot at the field goal. Stopped by Mo Matt, uh, or Mike Kovaleski. Here it well, is, you, you see him coming down, handing the ball up, then fullback just slips it in there. What are they thinking he's probably going to go outside? Didn't mind too much about giving up five or six yards in that situation there. Now, this is a tough decision being made over that sideline right now. They're going to let the clock run all the way down. Notre Dame not, not uh, using their last time out. They're going to let it run all the way down. It'll probably be about, all oh, 28 seconds or so to go before they take that timeout, uh, which means that Notre Dame won't have any chance at all. 29 seconds to go. Air Force waited till two seconds was on the snap clock. And so the field goal count will be about 45 yards. We'll be back for that try by Mateos in just a moment. Any chance of a fake or surprise you're in? Well, he's doing an awful lot of fooling around out there with that leg, and usually that might be an indication. It'd be a good place for it. It's going to have to be a 45-yard kick. Uh, it might be an excellent place to make that call if they have it in their report. All right, it'll be a 45-yard attempt from the near hash mark. Air Force tried to add to its lead of seven points. Now he kicks it away. I think it's going to be short. No good. Now he just barely missed. Did the tails. So Notre Dame has time for two or three plays here. They'll take over the line of scrimmage, which was around the 30 or 28-yard line. So that was a nice attempt by Mateos. There's practically no win here. It was coming across Miss Wright. Coming up at halftime from Fort Center, Bruce Beck will have all the scores, highlights of other games today around the country. And then tonight at 7.30 here on ESPN, it's LSU and Vanderbilt in a showdown in the Southeastern Conference. Now Grooms has the Notre Dame offense spot. Grooms going to go for it. Grooms plenty of time. Drills it over the middle. Knocked down intended for Howard. Good coverage down there by Mike Chandler, an inside linebacker. And they're going to Joe Howard. Stops the clock with 19 seconds to go, so that play took only five seconds. Well, he's got a good, strong arm. I'd like to see him go back in this situation and just throw one as long as he can, let some of those speed, one of those speed guys go down there and see whether he can get underneath. You can see Burline giving the signals there now. He gives the formation, he gives the play, uh, he gives the, everything except the starting count. Air Force continues with a four-man rush. Now they're showing a five-man front. And there's a blitz away, and they get it off to fullback Smith. Smith on the left side gets up over the 35-yard line. That may run out the first half. We're down inside eight sec nine seconds, and time is called right there by Notre Dame. So they won one more shot at it, the 35-second line, 35-yard line. That's the time remaining. Notre Dame. Fumble again by Grooms. Picked up by Pickett. Here comes Pickett trying to make something out of it outside the right. And he is thrown down as time will run out here in the first half. Down and there's the final second. And so the first half is over. And how'd you like this one, Ed Byers? Well, I liked what the things that Air Force did. I get a little disappointed in, in Notre Dame's offense. They, they've got to move the ball better than what, than what they have been doing. All right, we'll be coming back uh, shortly for the second half. And now Bruce Beck standing by with all the scores. The halftime score, Air Force 14, Notre Dame 7. <laughs> 